welcome to Events Uncovered TV. I'm your host, Silvia Pellegrini, and joining me today is Martin Donovan. Hello, how are you? Hello, Silvia. Thanks for having me. I'm good, um, thank you. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us briefly how you started? Sure. My name is Martin Donovan, professional or working journalist by trade, and I have been since uh, after finishing schooling and then I came into the trade magazines and I did a lot of commercial supplements and I am now editor of CEI Asia that's a, a magazine for the conference incentive and uh, events industry throughout the Asia Pacific but we also cover destinations in Europe so essentially my job is to look at destination features but also news about the events industry and about uh, what's happening, anything to do with developments in the mice industry, what event planners are doing. And also, um, we create our own events, which we hope will sort of educate and inform uh, people involved in the events industry. Uh, a little further background, um, I work for major newspapers, but those newspapers started to take an interest in the hotel destination and uh, convention industry and that's how I sort of uh, began to specialise in the mice industry and the business events industry. Okay, so um, let's talk about how can event planners uh, could make a better use of journalists when sharing ideas. Sure, I mean, uh, one way is to simply pick up the phone and not enough people are doing that these days. There seem, seems, seems to be a torrent of emails which uh, some people are good at answering, some people uh, don't have the time or space or capacity to answer them. Uh, the traditional format is the press release and a lot of uh, larger corporations and destination marketeers, etc., have a, a very good way of, a very good knack of dealing with a press release. So they get a press release out, preferably one side of a piece of paper, a current of A4, it can be electronic or it can be in PDF format mm -hmm. or a, a Word document or, or it, sometimes if you're less green conscious, even uh, a letter through the post, uh, the traditional mail. Mm -hmm. But on one side of the piece of paper would have the essential ingredients of what your events and what your organization is all about and preferably covering the who, what, when, where, how and why in the first couple of paragraphs. And then obviously the contact details and time and location of the event uh, and also the uh, possibility of photographs or preferably you can have a Flickr account or any of the other Send Me accounts which will have a sort of a, a choice of photographs, preferably including people to make it look more interesting, uh, which publications can use. Um, as well as that, keep yourself a roster of sympathetic journalists. Um, there's the uh, trade press around um, very vibrant in Europe, uh, in, in the North America and in Australia and now here in Asia with CEI Asia. Um, keep, keep those journalists on the roster and keep them informed and hopefully they, um, uh, you can meet them at trade events, you can meet them in your town or city uh, or you can uh, meet them at events organised by the, the very magazine itself but it's worth sort of uh, keeping those contacts going so, so they're kept in the loop about uh, the events you have and case studies and anything else and profiles etc that you want to share with, with the reader. You say um, meet uh, the journalists and uh, mm. maybe start a relationship in a way that you keep them sure. informed of what's happening. Um, yeah. You either contact them by phone or by internet and you let them uh, have your press release which should be just one page. Now, I'm having a problem with one page. How do you fit everything in one page? Because you say the, the, the who, the how, the where, the when, everything in the first couple of I mean, paragraphs. I mean, you, you have to admit, journalists are only human and they got, they're got time press and they've got limited attention spans, however intellectual <laughs> they try to pretend to be. Uh, one side of the piece of paper is all they've got time to read. If they want further yes. details, like they want to expand that, uh, one side of a piece of A4 paper into a, a three or four page feature, then surely they could pick up the phone and uh, ring uh, the people who sent the press release and get further details out of them that way. Um, the, the beauty of it, uh, that they can pick and choose. I mean, that, that one piece of paper might end up as a, a three paragraph story somewhere in mm -hmm. the back of the magazine, or it could 
uh, end up as a splendid feature, depending on uh, the quotes, the liveliness of the event, and most importantly, the images involved in the event. And this day and age, um, with the online uh, video links to the events, anything that they can sort of curate and web links, etc. Mm -hmm. So it all, but it should all start with something very, very brief, and they can tell you yes or no or maybe uh, what their interest is in with the particular event. Uh, don't forget the flip side of all this is that some event planners and some destinations or hotels. They don't want to uh, avoid the press altogether. Maybe they got something to hide, you know, or okay. they could, or, or simply they could be um, wanting to sort of just publicise the good uh, part of their venues and mm -hmm. sort of hide the uh, the misgivings that some clients might have, etc. So there's always a game. I mean, there's always a sort of gatekeeper concept and sort of what information you can have. Let's say I've organized an event and I wanted to make it. I want to make sure that you know it's sold out, so it's in the press. And is it something that you you use the press beforehand in order so that it gets sold out, or you do it afterwards so to show how good your event was? I think usually what people do, and this just spreads across the spectrum when it comes to organizing events. Uh, they have a a strategy, a marketing strategy is one side. Marketing, um, if it's advertising, you've got full control over it. You can control where the poster goes, where the advertisement goes, what tone it has, what colour it has, what space that it takes up in the uh, in the magazine. But when it comes to a, uh, a piece of journalism, it's generally the so-called, it's the flip side of the freedom of the press, how much they want to write, how accurate they are, how balanced they are. Etc. So when you when you've got a media strategy, you're looking at those parts of it. Um, people in PR and PR companies do events as well. They're very savvy at sort of taking on board journalists, uh, watering them and feeding them, etc. Bring them to a familiarisation trip and giving them a free uh, ticket at the event. I mean, that's. That's a tried and trusted way of doing it, but, but very often, uh, I mean, so some of the more serious-minded large newspapers would decline that or just leave it to their sort of junior feature writers. Um, there is a, a certain way, another part of the strategy, I mean, you just got to be, with a lot of things, plan it, so plan your strategy, understand that the sort of, the unpaid for, um, the the writing in a magazine or newspaper is usually in the spirit of free and independent inquiry. It's not sort of captivated by marketers. Mm -hmm. uh, PR companies would would know different. That's why they call it dark arts. I mean, they got ways of enticing and getting gaining publicity, for etc. It's it's no coincidence that uh, in some magazines, certainly not ours, that uh, a hotel which would give a, a nice familiarisation trip to travel journalists would be featured quite heavily in a particular newspaper. Well, that's fair enough, but other newspapers would prefer to have a little note down at the bottom that uh, Mr. Jones of, was entertained by this airline and that hotel and this resort, etc. You know, mm. So it, it's a kind of a disclaimer at the bottom. Uh, but, w but, but generally, I mean, uh, journalists, if, if you want an intimate view of things, then journalists have to be familiar with the products. If you have a particular event, then... Um, I, th I think it's, it's the magic of the event itself, uh, and that that could be a musical event, it could be a political event. Uh, depends on the communication that that uh, that, that, that you want to uh, transmit. Uh, very often, I mean, you might be just looking at a PR person to, to speak to, as opposed to a, a journalist who might not see any validity in it. You say also that you um, organize your own events. Is that to educate? Um, uh, yeah, well, we, we'd like to, I'd like to think it's to educate, but obviously it's, it's to be commercially viable. And uh, mm -hmm. um, CEI is owned by a company called Haymarket, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, much of their uh, business comes from actual events uh, in the UK. In Asia, we have sister magazines who put on events on behalf of the finance industry, 
through the uh, finance titles that we have. And on behalf of the um, advertising, PR, and marketing industries, and we have a magazine called Campaign, which caters to that. CEI has been a little bit later to the show that we actually report about events and report about things that event planners do. But the title here, yeah. you know, this this logo here will be now a familiar one for uh, in places like Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Singapore, where we'll be having the CEI Summit. Uh, we've done this before with the CEI Forum. It's basically it's a gathering of buyers and sellers. Okay. Uh, but on, on top of that, there will be sort of um, team building exhibitions. There will be talks by uh, leaders in the industry. Uh, sponsors will be on board as well. There will be panel discussions. So it will be organized. It will be sort of a chance for buyers and suppliers to meet together and get to know some agencies and also for a chance to sort of uh, a one-day event where they'll have a sort of element of education too. Uh, this justifies, of course, you know, people being out of the office for the day at a nice hotel, etc., mm-hmm. doing seminars, uh, educational stuff, but also sort of networking. At networking. The same time. Um, about networking, um, is there a way for event planners um, to find and to get new ideas and new networking opportunities through? journalist uh, we kind of hope so but i think that the event planning community are quite uh, innovative and more self-starting and i think that i get the sense that many of them have been sort of disappointed by journalists in this uh, in the past you know the, the journalists traditionally would sort of uh, turn up for a free drink and then uh, go home when it was all gone uh, but we like to uh, a magazine was traditionally sort of read as a priority amongst people. Uh, that's the, the printed object. But now we're shifting over into a more uh, social media uh, outlets, more online outlets. We're finding with uh, social media units that a lot of event planners are forming their own communities, mm-hmm. uh, actually sort of looking for the answers and networking tips amongst themselves. Uh, so they're operating a, a good self-help um units of their own in different regions across the world. This could kind of cost magazines dearly unless we kind of engage with this. So this is what we were attempt to do. We're also trying to sort of um, pick out or hope that uh, amongst the event planning community that thought leaders would contribute to our magazine with op-ed articles giving their opinions, that they will give some quotes or analysis on issues of the day, on whether and one of the advantages and disadvantages of a particular destination or kind of resort that they may choose to hold an event in. So we, we have to sort of keep on the, uh, keep listening to event planners, keep talking to event planners. Uh, but but we, we never get uh, so arrogant that we can sort of give them tips on how to do their jobs because actually what we want to do is to sort of report how they do their jobs, mm-hmm. create uh, create a community for them and hopefully it benefits everyone whether they're suppliers or clients but uh, I mean the, there is a the way gen- of working together isn't it I mean for sure. um, if uh, the van planners do their jobs and the journalists mm-hmm. do their jobs so they report to what the van planners are doing that, that could be a, a brilliant uh, collaboration wouldn't it absolutely uh, absolutely. we, we hope it, uh, it, it is that way I mean, and, and then uh, in terms of revenue, because uh, we are uh, commercial uh, projects too, that uh, suppliers, venues, destinations, etc., would see this hum of activity and would sort of want to present their goods in the format of that advertising, whether it be print or in publications. Mm-hmm. So, so we 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 we, we encourage these uh, uh, great sort of conversations, and it's good to see a conversation like this happening sort of halfway across the world. <laughs> yeah. So um, you say you you commercial in the sense that when if I send you a press release mm-hmm. and you decide to um, put it on your magazine, sure, would yeah. I need to pay you? No, no, I, I, absolutely not. Certainly not in uh, in Hong Kong, which which is still sort of a, has a common law uh, topic. What happens in the 
in the darker ends of mainland China, uh, just to the north of me here. I'm not sure really how it works there or, or in other parts of Europe. Uh, but certainly, I mean, the reason why you've seen with journeys is that you have some sort of sense of ethics of where you're at. And in our case, with a CEI, the, um, the advertising and the editorial is separate. So we have a, an independent editorial outlook. There are certain commercial pressures around, but th th there is a line there. That, uh, it's grey on some sides. It's, it's red in certain parts uh, in which uh, people don't cross. So uh, we're not meant to give any favours. Everyone gets a so-called fair crack of the whip and gets a sense of fairness. But if your press release says... Um, my venue is is great. Just simply come into it, and my event uh, pay me money. That that's a blatant form of advertising. If it's something interesting, it's a, it's, it's a very good to, to our readership. Mm -hmm. that, that then we use it for what it's worth. Uh, if, if it's a shameless promotion, then it belongs to the kind of advertisement. But that's you know we can work with that. We can sort of. Call, call the sender up and say, look, let's have, let's have a talk about this. Uh, who did you have at your event? I mean, most importantly, what's good for sort of um, highlighting a, an event agency is a, is a case study. Um, our market researchers uh, told us that uh, case studies are very popular among our readers. So we, for instance, carry at least four case studies per, each, per issue. Uh, which go down quite well, and they're from varying, varying sizes of agencies. Um, they're, they're not advertisements. They're, they're actually a construction of you know what what that event agency has done. Mm -hmm. So so advertising is paid for, editorial is free. But with advertising, you have more control over it uh, within the boundaries and the costs, etc. Editorial kind of rests upon our, uh, the judgment of the of the journalists in between. Obviously, that judgment can be sort of influenced we need to be educated as well we're not sort of you know in our ivory towers so we try and listen very carefully to what uh, people in the industry are saying so we can get uh, we can cut through the noise and just pick up some good facts and some nice stories for our readers so when you're talking about case studies um is it uh, they are important because other event planners for example are learning and um, taking uh, notes you know from sure, those. Yeah, sure. this is what they said they like to see what another agency is doing yeah. they like to see what they, what's happening in another uh, destination and when it comes to sectors of industries like automotives electronics the association yeah. fields pharmaceuticals etc f and b what is actually being done for instance uh, what, what, what are they doing to sort of make their events uh, more outstanding for this is if I can do a bit of plugging and advertising of my own. One of our issues last year, uh, this was a uh, Moe and Chandon, the uh, French uh, Champagne House. They did a sort of uh, a film gala theme in Hong Kong. This was uh, the um, uh, the actual sort of hardware and the construction. The concept was done by a company called Uniplan, uh, originally a German country, but has operations out here in China. Um, this was done at a film studio in uh, in Hong Kong here, which was the venue for many Kung Fu films, and they had the the name of the actress um, uh, who, who is in Kill Bill, the, one of the star uh, people there. You probably know her name. Her name evades me at the moment, but she was at the centre of the piece. Now that, that's fantastic. That would that would have only been shared with uh, potential clients, but but here it's given a wider showing to uh, other event planners across Asia and now uh, across the globe. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, I mean, for, very often for the case studies are important because if they're exciting enough and uh, with nice photographs, we can uh, we can give them a, a front page showing uh, like we just have here. Um, it's a, it's very good. It's very good sort of kudos for the. Uh, company for the brand, the case study, mm. etc. Oh, there this is here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but yeah. the uh, the headline reads um, "Moe and Shandon Sparkles at A List Fest," and it's actually Uma Thurman. Oh yes, uh, star who who is there? She's she's there with her sword with uh, a guy called uh, Donny Yan, who's a local kung fu movie star here. Okay. Uh, so it's called the Power of Film Girls. Amazing things go on here uh, on behalf of brands, uh, but with a bit of um, uh, with an okay from the client, and then they share it uh, with um, with other event planners, and it's, it is pretty good. It's a, it's, it is a nice feel good stories. Uh, this 
was over. This is all free. <laughs> it's all free. Um, all yeah, free it, it's good because yeah. um, you you hear so much of um, um, you want to put an article somewhere, and um, okay, if it's five lines, you pay so much. If it's ten lines, you pay so much. And I think uh, I just, it, it makes it. So if you don't have much money, really, your your event won't be that much in the press, you know, and that's well, make you well. Well, that's an ad that, that's advertising. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. go to the uh, Corre della Sora or Figaro, or well, that's in France. Sorry, one of these papers, and you say, "Sorry, I want I want five lines on this particular event in your editorial space." The editor says, "No, we decide what goes in it." Yeah. Uh, as part of the function of the press and their kind of free will democracy. In other places, it, 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 you said the, the, the lines are very fuzzy, but, but here there's a kind of distinct. Well, we decided uh, that that particular Moe and Shandong event by uh, Uniplan, how they transformed the film series, we thought it was a remarkably interesting story, uh, which it, it was, it's in the form of a case study, but um, quite interesting. You got hot Hollywood A listers there, you got sort of props from the movie Kill Bill. Uh, they transformed the uh, this film studio into a gala evening. It was a it was a fantastic uh, thing, all for a champagne brand. And so, I mean? when you actually did that, was it um, that a journalist went and had a look and then wrote an article about it, or you actually uh, received a press release about it? No, no, we didn't receive a press release. We spoke. To, we 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 try to reach out to people um, yeah. in the event planning industry. Okay. In this case, uh, Uniplan. Now, as you know yourself, people in the event plan planning industry are very, very busy. So we just um, we just arranged time for a coffee and a chat, and we talked. What kind of stories? What kind of events have we done? Well, we did this event. Well, we said that's a very, very nice event. Mm. We'd like to showcase it. We'd like to use it as a story, possibly a cover story. Um, now, of course, the client is number one with uh, event planners out there. So they they clear it with Moe and Shandong. They got fine. Relations with Dan Moy and Shandon fairly content with it. Uh, it. It's good for relationship between the agency and that client. It's very good for what we do. Mm -hmm. um, no, I mean I think that was a fairly exclusive. Uh, that's what journalists like to have as well. Quite exclusive piece of information. Great story. Uh, mm -hmm. that we had there obviously it's very public I mean you can look at Uniplan's website and they have details of it etc and it's kind of common knowledge now but uh, for us really in terms of content uh, I, I think that was a very pleasing kind of story I mean we try to get the, um, the, the best stories each month I mean this story would be born out of free and independent equality it would be done out of a journalistic listening, you know, sort of engaging with event planners and event planners say, why not give you guys information, you make us all feel good and it does the industry a world of good too. Yeah. And it's free. Who is your audience? Um, corporate buyers, event planners, whether they be agencies, etc. Um that's our, that's our core audience. We got we also got marketeers in the desk in the con, the convention bureaus, uh, the venues, etc., who are interested in sort of hearing what event planners have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's always a great debate and discussion. We have sort of a news pages up front, uh, job news, and people always want to know who's the next who's a new general manager at this particular venue mm -hmm. or who's a new DOSM that we have to deal with, uh, the, the events person at different venues and, and what's happening with uh, global event companies, whether it be Imagination, Pacific World, etc. You know, who's left and who's gone in. Uh, that, that kind of um, information is kind of happening that you hear all the time in uh, in Europe. Uh, in Asia, it's a bit more difficult to sort of dig out because our... Uh, uh, events industry is not as sort of uh, mature, fully flourish as it is in other in the Western world. You okay. know? Uh, but, but essentially, our our audience, the ones we target, are event planners. But key is the corporate buyers, the people who with the brands, the people who uh, make the decisions about um, which event agency who's pitching for them at that time is any good. So he want they want to know background about what the event planners are doing. So it's actually a event uh, industry magazine for event people because it's quite 
most of the time you just um, you read um, some information here and there but it's good to have everything in one place the same thing when you're saying about uh, having an event I think that is great because you get um, as an event planner you get a chance to um, not just compare and show off but actually to exchange ideas to network to get to know people to build relationship with people and it doesn't mean that you are against each other but you could work together and you could help each sure. other. Say, so, um, I wh when is the actual next um, summit you said? Is that the next? Well, it, uh, the next summit is uh, Shanghai. I think it's March the twelfth. Um, and if they, this will be sort of a uh, Shanghai is a very key market for us. There's so much exciting stuff going on up there at the moment. Uh, rapidly growing city and a lot of uh, key events. People are up there. A lot of key corporate buyers uh, from the big brands in China are up there too. Uh, that's all we're having. We're having a panel discussion. We have an events team at uh, Haymarket Asia here who, who largely look, at, look after uh, a lot of the, the, the logistics of planning an event. Uh, I, as a journalist, I'm, I'm left to sort of advise and help on content uh, etc. And, um, and probably moderate on a couple of panel discussions uh, greet the people up there, etc., and sort of be, to take an ambassadorial role uh, uh, on behalf of the magazine. So do you think you will have an event over here, in like in this side? In, in Europe, well, we, well, we happen to have a, um, uh, a sister magazine in London, mm -hmm. uh, which has been running longer than this, called C and IT, that's Conferences and Incentive Travel. Yeah. Uh, run by Hit Market. Very strong, perhaps in Northern Europe, uh, in uh, of course in the UK in particular. Yeah. Uh, they have held forums uh, as far far afield as um, Abu Dhabi, the Middle East Forum. Uh, I'm not sure whether they, they hold uh, forums on the actual European continent, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they have the major trade shows, EIBTM, etc., uh, IMEX Frankfurt and, and IMEX America. Um, their events. Uh, we try to sort of, we try, well at the early stages, trying to sort of develop a firmer bond with them in terms of uh, sharing ideas and content. So, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, sure, um, cei.asia. There should be sort of contact listings within our website as well. Mm -hmm. uh, our website is due to go uh, undergo a, a fresh renovation. I, I don't know uh, which month that we're going to be pointing this in, but we're hoping to have it, you know, beautiful video like this, streaming for people, sharing content, and make it even more engaging with event planners, uh, not just in Asia, but across the globe. So uh, event planners across the globe can find out what, how, what the event scene is like in Asia. Yes. So thank you so much, Martin, for joining us today and for sharing your knowledge with us. Thanks. Um, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my blog at www.eventsuncovered.tv forward slash blog and to my podcast, Events Uncovered TV on iTunes. Please comment, like and share this interview. If you are a member of Events Uncovered Academy, log in into the members area where my guest, Marty, will be sharing exclusive contents. Um, if you are not a member, please head over to www.eventsuncovered.tv forward slash academy where there are details on how to join. Okay, so Martin, what are you going to reveal in the next 15 minutes? I'm going to reveal my uh, top three um, candid uh, secrets about how to grab the attention and how to sort of uh, get the most out of uh, a journalist who works on the meetings and events beat. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Until next time, this is Silvio Pellegrini from Events Uncovered TV.